Um, I'm Jim Deardotis. I teach music and media in Chicago. I've been at Columbia since 2009, and I've taught this since year one uh, with 150 kids in, uh, in a class, uh, and now I've had two classes the last two semesters. Um, why music and media? I mean, that's what I am. I'm a music journalist and critic my whole career, and uh, I figured I'll give them Chicago through my prism. Number one, media. Uh, we look at the roots of journalism, the heyday, if you will, Ethel Payne and Roger Ebert and Royko, radio and television. Uh, uh, we're doing readings. It's essentially an English class, a very, very big English class, <laughs> but here we're doing readings of, of these great writers. And for the music, which is two-thirds or more of the class, we have texts in the form of video. A lot of watching of films, a video of digging deep into the music, which ranges from the blues through gospel, uh, soul, uh, the really shitty period of Chicago rock in the 60s, where everybody wanted to be the Beatles, the really great era in the alt era. Uh, we have two kinds of experiences, the big lectures and uh, breakout sessions. The last 45 minutes or hour of the class, I have the TAs teaching those. Uh, I have, thankfully, eight graduate teaching assistants they're great, but it is, like Rocky said, a second class. We're teaching them as well as teaching the uh, students in the big class. There's two kinds of assignments. It, it is an English class. That's what Neil told me I could, uh, that's what Ken told me I could teach in the beginning. You know, so there's reading every week, background on the genre we'll be talking about. And then I want the students to dig deep and give me their reactions to the art that they are consuming. Uh, they are of a generation where, like journalism means false, fake news, okay? Critic means this guy, okay? But there is a turning point in Ratatouille where his whole world becomes technicolor, like Wizard of Oz, because he has a simple vegetable dish that brings him alive. I want them to give me both their emotional reaction to and their intellectual analysis of these texts, of this music, of these videos. Head and heart, that's what Ebert always said. We need both. I don't care if they hate the music or love the music. I want them to dig deep to tell me why, which is, I think, a skill that's going to help them in every other class to come. We start out with Nabokov, good readers and good writers, and I, I try to illustrate it vividly to them. What Nabokov said is good uh, writing is writing that requires rereading and re-re-reading, and every time you get a different layer. So picture swans on a lake. Well, Thomas Kincaid, painter of shit, is that one version. This is also swans on a lake. Whether you like it or not, I think you'll agree that Dali is going to take a lot more time for you to figure out your emotional reaction, your intellectual analysis. Uh, I'm teaching them to be critics and they have three tools to do this. Context, where does this come from? Where does it fit? Evidence, back it up. The pizza at this place sucks. That's not a review. The pizza at this place sucks because the cheese isn't, there isn't enough and the crust is soggy and the this, and this sauce is sickly sweet. And then insight, that's the key. Because each of them brings something different. The filmmaker, the uh, videographer, the dancer, right? They all bring something different that they have to put into a thesis. Why I love this, why I hate this, why I don't understand this. Context, evidence, insight, tell me. If they come out of my class with the ability to write that thesis, uh, to write a solid critique, to read texts in the way we hope they will learn in all of our literature classes, I think I've got them on a pretty good path, you know, uh, rolling forward in, in uh, everything that they'll do in Columbia, because everything is going to involve writing at some point, even the kids in the video game department. Um, every week I have one of the students from each breakout group, I have eight per each class, read what the TAs and I have chosen as some of the A's that week. And it's daunting. They get up in front of 150, 9 o'clock on a Monday morning, and they read their work to the class, but they get this great feedback from the students and from the TAs. I ask the TAs, why did you give this an A? Right? I'm trying to get everybody a chance to see what good work looks like. Right? And I'm going to shut up because it's about the students, not me. My final couple of slides are the work they're doing. And I think these are, these are pretty goddamn good critiques.
and again, they all read these in front of the whole class, and the class claps. And The only other thing I would say is I'm at a disadvantage for some of the big Chicago peers because I have nowhere to take them. Chess Records is shuttered. You know, Music Row is gone. Maxwell Street is gone. I can't take them to the empty bottle. They're under 21 and it happens at midnight. You know, so, but I have this other tool. I can show them Satchmo performing and they can react to it. I can have anybody I want as a guest speaker thanks to video and this music. Uh, which, you know, hey, I'd like to take them to see these artists. I can't. You know, Frankie Knuckles is dead, uh, among, among other problems. But I don't think, I've never gotten that complaint from them, I wish we got out of class more. Because we have a lot of discussions both in the big lecture and in the breakout groups. They feel like they're getting one-on-one -on -one attention. I hope. You know, if I figure out a way to take them to the bottle, I will. <laughs> But we don't want them to be tempted by the problematic uh, parts of my uh, beat. <laughs> you could wind up like Al Jorgensen. Hell no. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what I had. Thank you very much.